Hello and welcome. In this video I'll obviously be taking a look at the uh, latest release from Eagle Dynamics, the Mosquito. Um, yeah, I've been looking forward to this one for quite a while. Um, been having some flights here and there, just trying to familiarise myself with it and um, it's absolutely brilliant once you get the the hang of it and um, get her under control. But um, this is my first first of uh, my tutorial videos. This is the uh, cockpit tour, so um, I'll pass myself on to myself. All right, so here we are in the office, and, and what I'll do is I'll take you on a tour of uh, the cockpit, uh, going through the different instruments, um, starting from left, working my way to right, and then hopefully uh, trying to decipher all the bits and pieces that we've got in the back there. Uh, I've not actually gone through it properly myself, so that'll be interesting. So, um, if we start just here on the left hand side, obviously you've got window, uh, your left click opens, right click and uh, closes. You'll need that to um, speak to the ground crew to get the engines running. This is your uh, radio compass uh, power switches and um, your beam uh, approach um, when that's when the aircraft is live and that is switched on uh, a frequency will be repeated in your ear um, just to let you know that if you're on the, on the correct approach um, and the volume for that is there underneath that is a push to talk um, unless you've got that uh, set to something on your flight controls then we have um, your elevator trim I've had to obviously set that to um, something on my um, flight stick because I can't actually for the life of me find where to adjust it um, actually in cockpit so if anybody's got any idea of where I'm supposed to be looking that'd be great if you just let me know in the comments then we've got the UV lamp here which will um, well, I'll leave that till last. I'll, I'll show you what that does, obviously. Then you've got your um, left instrument and compass dimmer uh, lights there, switches. Um, the magnetic compass is down there. Then we come on to the main uh, quadrant for the engine controls. Obviously, you've got your throttle levers there, your prop pitch there, the fr friction for both of them there. This is your mixture uh, for ritual week, um, and the only way you can really tell um, visibly is if you flick that over to week while you're flying, the flames that come out of the exhaust ports will then glow a more orangey colour rather than blue. So, um, yeah, uh, try that while you're flying just to give it a butcher's. In here is the supercharger switch from low gear to high gear that won't really be used until you're up at a, a high altitude um, try and get more of a boost out of the engine and then uh, last on the left hand side we have our radio box um, down here is the transmit receive um, switches there so you can left, uh, right click, right click, left click and it will put it back into radio mode um, then you've got four channels um, A is for ground so if you've got um, any of your ground crew um, you'll use A channel A B is for ATC things like takeoff and landing channel C is for homing station or non-directional beacons and then finally D is um, for the uh, ground direction finding stations so um, not used to this sort of way of communicating um, I'll be honest and oh what's that sweet oh the radio lights dimmer. Yeah, these do glow quite bright, so um, you've got a dimmer switch there. Um, I think that's it for the left hand side. Okay, so onto the main instrument panel. Um, we'll start at the top here. We've got a boost cutoff switch here. Um, below that, we have our RI uh, compass, which I've already shown the uh, switches to activate this, uh, but you can set a course by using the uh, knob there. You've got RPM gauges, uh, fuel pressure warning 
uh, lights here boost gauges and this shows the manifold pressure of each engine relative to um, ambient air pressure under that we've got oil temperature gauges uh, oil pressure gauges and then below that we've got the um, radiator coolant temperature gauges and then last but not least on the bottom here we have the landing light switches uh, one for each wing next we have our speed gauge in miles per hour um, reads anything up to 2 AE and then on the outer and then you go to the inner ring up to 480 miles an hour um, obviously depending on what speed you're doing uh, next to that is artificial horizon with um, bank angle indicator here uh, and shown in degrees of 30 and 60 and 90 obviously being each side uh, we've got our barometric altimeter uh, which can be uh, set there um, you can set that to obviously if I do that I've now uh, uh, above ground level but you can set that to obviously uh, above mean sea level if you have the um, QFE here is your uh, direction indicator uh, when you fire this up um, you'll need to dial in the whatever the uh, magnetic compass is saying there uh, when when it does fire up it will um, probably uh, set up to where it was last but um, you will need to adjust that before uh, flight uh, obviously a vent of some sort for heating yeah, undercarriage gauge um, showing you up and down also has a blind so you can shut the lights out your flap gauge um, it takes it down to around about 45 degrees I've never um, been able to get it any uh, lower than that I don't think it can possibly go any lower than that um, obviously a clock here is your oxygen and regulator gauges um, obviously your regulator switches there that tells you how much oxygen you have in the tanks and this reads out your um, oxygen flow in uh, thousands of feet so 0, 10,000 feet, 15,000, 20,000 all the way up to 40,000 um, not sure uh, it can possibly climb above 40,000 but uh, I don't know the full history on the mosquito then below that we have um, uh, air pressure in the uh, brakes or um, hydraulic pressure um, as long as that's reading above 200 pounds per square inch um, you're good to go and then obviously you've got the flight column here your brake lever um, obviously the parking brake is set at the moment because the spring is out if I unclip the brakes oh no hold on yeah so now I've got the brakes in if you hold left alt and tango and uh, it pushes that in let go of the brake parking brake is now set now it's not um, obviously that's your f uh, f gun machine gun switch uh, amongst other bits and pieces there so uh, I'm now going to switch seats um, so we can do the other side this is your vertical velocity indicator this will tell you if you're climbing or descending in thousands of feet underneath that is the turn slip indicator this section here is for your Bombay doors uh, landing gear and flaps the landing gear and flaps have safety catches so you will need to remember to activate those before you use them with the landing gear you need to activate the safety latch before you raise the gear then once the lever comes back down once you put it back into neutral the latch will go back in to how it was with the flaps you have to activate the latch put the lever down once that has got to where you want it uh, right click to lift it and uh, the latch will come back on again and you will not be able to do anything until that, that latch is off so you will need to remember that the latch is there underneath that is the gun arming switch uh, left click opens the cover left click switches it on right click switches it off right click closes the cover 
below that is Alon trim that's the trim wheel so um, that's where that's situated below that are the controls for de-icing of which is not modelled yet then we have the electrical arming switch uh, right click that and it switches it on and you can see we now have lights um, in on certain instruments if you want to be pedantic uh, when you do your start up and follow the um, checklist uh, this is your voltmeter here uh, if it reads anything above 24 volts you're good to go it's usually around about 26 volts so always good to go left click that now and we'll bring it back down um, these are your magnetos for both engines this is your um, bomb arming uh, controls this is a dimmer switch for it this I believe is a turning indicator to get you over the target um, not 100% sure on how that works at the moment um, but I'm sure that will come l at a later point this uh, light well, as it says there light on bomb doors open so if they are open you will have the red light this is to jetson your um, armament um, this is your arming uh, switch area here so right uh, left click opens the door now if you flick these switches it arms whatever's on the pylons whether it be uh, bombs or tanks and the last two bottom switches are for fusing so nose fusing tail fusing or for both it's up to you right click and that closes it under here is the exposure for the gun camera um, depending on uh, weather conditions uh, at the moment it's set to sunny at zero feet uh, you can set it to cloudy and obviously um, move that where you want it I um, don't think the gun camera is actually working but the controls are there and they, they do work that's good these are your um, feather switches uh, push and hold them it will shut the engine down and feather the props um, and it's also if you feathered them and want to restart as it says here um, anything over 800 rpm push again and um, we'll restart the engine down here is um, not a lot by the looks of things at the moment um, can't click any of it I'm guessing at some stage on the earlier models of the Mosquito none of this was here um, and then it was access for the observer to get to the nose when they had a perspex, perspex nose um, but I'm guessing that all changed and this is just a an addition uh, as is that and this bit here is actually an, an armoured bulkhead so um, yeah both that and the pilot and the observer seats are made of armoured plating um, but yeah that's that's it for the centre console oh and if we go along the top obviously that's your gun aimer with the range and base in feet uh, your rudder trim your best friend on takeoff and your radiator um, flaps open or closed and your air filter on or off and with this one it's the fuel pump long range fuel pump if the pressure becomes low this red light will come on um, so yeah that's it onto the right hand side okay now onto the right hand side of the cockpit uh, your observers window can be opened with the controls there now we have a row of switches on top of the box here uh, gun camera, nav light, UV light, pito switch, fuel pump, reflector sight for the gun aimer um, this is a nav headlamp um, I believe there may be a light in the nose that can be changed via different modes here uh, I'm guessing for what went on approach to an airfield maybe uh, I'm not 100% sure on that switch this is IFF um, radio detonator cover switch so if you crash away from uh, base you can detonate uh, highly sensitive equipment using that port and starboard um, engine uh, extinguishers 
then we have resin lamp on and off and I believe this changes the color of the resin lamp uh, from red to green to amber um, this is your voltmeter uh, when that sh flash is red obviously it means it's not charging this is light morse um, obviously morse code button there uh, that will activate your downward morse and upward morse uh, I'm guessing this is uh, for possibly uh, making contact with people on the ground or maybe aircraft uh, that are below or above you uh, in in radio silence uh, I'm not 100% sure on that one next we come on to the fuel gauges so inner center and outer these these are the gauges you'll be looking at when you do your start up because you'll start on the outer tanks uh, wiper um, which I do have a control for um, but I've not been able to actually get the wipers going um, outside air temperature intercom switch for in inside comms um, this is for trailing antennas uh, reeling in and reeling out this is your gun heater and then we have uh, observers oxygen supply gauges with the pressure valve there um, without that open you will not get oxygen so remember to switch this on first and then go over to your um, regulator valve which is there and now we are using oxygen um, uh, turn those off as well uh, one thing I did forget uh, while I was on this side of the um, cockpit was the uh, fuel tank jetson which is tucked under here uh, so right cover to open right click to open the cover um, so yeah if you want to dump your tanks that's how you do it back over to the right hand side uh, we now have door controls so uh, door open and um, close that up and we can also jettison it by pulling this red handle here uh, which I'm not going to do um, but yeah that's the right hand side of the cockpit and uh, next will be the uh, equipment in the back okay so behind the pilot and the observer is a very very cramped bit of space here so you'll have to forgive me because I'm trying to manipulate this with my track IR um, I'll just point out what these are um, I won't go into too much detail because there's just too much to explain uh, but at the top here we've got the IFF um, controls obviously different modes uh, detonate switches and all that beautiful stuff down here is your antenna modes um, all, all done via flicking that left and right um, this side is the um, T1154 transmitter um, yeah a lot of controls on that and then on this one is the R1155 receiver now again a lot of controls and a lot of explaining so this will come in a separate video um, that has a lot to do with the loop antenna which is situated oh God, here and which you can turn um, d uh, along the center axis there on a bearing of your choice and um, that you obviously got light dimmers and all sorts um, but yeah there is a lot of stuff crammed into the back of a very small uh, bit of space and I would have hated to have been an observer in this aircraft because you have this tiny little bit of space to try and get through to be able to set things up um, and I'm slowly starting to lose my patience with my head tracker but yeah that's behind the cockpit and we finish our tour uh, behind the pilot seat and see if I can manipulate myself right so some major controls here uh, you've got your fuel tank selectors here outer or main supply uh, you obviously select the outers for start up and then on to uh, main supply afterwards um, engine cut out this is your uh, pressure valve for the fuel you want to switch that on as well when you um, 
start up. If you're starting in um, very, 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 very cold conditions, uh, this is to dilute the oil to get the uh, to get it flowing to get the engine started. Um, this one is the uh, fuel transfer valve uh, for transferring from one um, tank to the other. You've got your um, oil pressure boost for left and right engines there, and your cockpit heater there. And I think that commences the tour. Okay, I did say I'd show you the UV lights in action, so I advanced the time to 11 o'clock at night. Got a lovely full moon up there. Now, um, if we press left Alt and Lima, it brings up the flashlight. Obviously, very handy for the dark. And what we're going to look for is the electrical supply switch. So that is now on. Next, we are going to fire up the UV lamps. Now, this being an older aircraft, this is going to take some time, so what I'm going to do is turn off the uh, flashlight using left alt and lima again. Now I'm going to speed it up. And there we go. The UV lamps have activated the glow-in-the-dark uh, paint on the, on the gauges there and I think that's absolutely brilliant and the best thing about it is the the actual if I turn the UV lights off it fades over time so what I'm going to do now is um, if I can find the switch which I'm not going to use I can just there turn off the UV lamps now I'm going to speed it up just to show you that it does actually fade I think that's fantastic. It's the little things. I mean, somebody's gone to the trouble to make sure that the glow-in-the-dark paint on the gauges actually behaves as it should. Big, big, big thumbs up to you, whoever you are. That was fantastic. And if we want to um, activate it again, just switch on the UV lamps. there we go we're up and running again but that's just brilliant love that anyway um, you got this far thank you for watching uh, consider subscribing if you haven't uh, leave me a like if you enjoyed the video but if you do leave a dislike can you just let me know why uh, I keep getting a lot of dislikes but there's no explanations um, and a bit of feedback would be appreciated um, other than that, um, thank you again for watching and as always take care and I'll see you in the next one.